It's InfoWars Nightly News. Be sure and check the website, InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv forward slash news. We're now joined by longtime liberty activist Gary Franchi, who's been very successful in everything he's done for promoting Aaron Russo's great film, America, Freedom to Fascism, to making documentary films, and producing his own daily TV show, The Reality Report. I wanted to get Gary on to talk about his ideas of how we can hopefully uh, even energize the population more to a higher level to ensure that Ron Paul wins the Republican nomination for president in 2012. Gary, great to have you here with us, my friend. Alex, thanks for having me on this new format. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Congratulations on the work you've been doing as well. Liberty is rising and tyranny is certainly freaking out about it. And, and later I've got a question about Illinois because you're up there with the 75 years the guy's facing uh, because he dared film the police in public. But first, uh, this hoax that Ron Paul can't win, even though he's a top-tier candidate in the top three uh, in every poll, every straw poll, uh, what's your view on that? Is the hoax successful? Uh, actually, I believe the hoax is going to backfire on itself because when you have the media parroting talking points that are being handed down from on high and the people seeing different results in their own investigative research online, these two these two worlds collide and it causes the American people to realize what's actually happening and make the sound judgments that we hope that they would make. So I think in the end this hoax is going to backfire and it's up to the alternative media, it's up to the people themselves to make the, the ultimate choice. Well the hoax began to backfire just a few weeks ago when even The Daily Show had this huge compilation of every network saying the same thing. Well number one is this, number two is that, number four is this person never mentioning who was number three. Or in polls where he was number two they would mention number one and number three. Or if he won the New Hampshire straw poll, which is even more coveted than Iowa, no coverage. So it has backfired, but still some people say, yeah, I like Ron Paul, but he can't win. Ron Paul wasn't even in the top five three and a half years ago in the 2008 election. He's in the top three right now, and I think it's mission number one to get the word out that he is the only person who isn't an establishment candidate, the only person who isn't bought and paid for like Obama, Rick Perry, uh, people uh, like Mr. Carbon Tax, Mr. Obamacare author Mitt Romney. Uh, what's your take on uh, the two guys that the system is pushing, Mitt Romney and Rick Perry? Well, uh, the world is soon going to see our first attack ad that we're going to be producing. Uh, you're going to hear the people are hearing it here first, actually, uh, with our revolution pack. Uh, we're producing a commercial to go after Romney, to go after Perry, and expose them as the the plastic men that they are, and the. I think that they're just, they're just the polished central casting uh, figures that the American people have been sort of groomed to accept. Uh, they spit out the talking points that come down from the Republican Party, uh, they, told, they told the party line, and they are uh, easily corruptible through all the different lobbying money and, and through their, their, dirty, their dirty campaign finance work. So uh, the, people are, the people are gonna see this through the work that we're doing with the Revolution PAC and through alternative media. Isn't it coffin nails for Perry? And, of course, for Mitt Romney, for their campaigns, if Ron Paul brings up that Mitt Romney's a carbon taxer and gets praised by Al Gore, that Mitt Romney wrote Obamacare, that, that, that Rick Perry was the chief of staff for the presidential campaign of uh, Al Gore, and then in 93 supported Hillary Care, NAFTA superhighways, uh, Bilderberg meetings, forced inoculations of Gardasil. I mean, Rick Perry, it's hard to imagine somebody worse and more fake than this guy. I think Ron Paul needs to go on the attack. I know he's a gentleman, but now is the time to go on the attack. What's your view on that? Well, I think we have a short window of opportunity where Ron could actually come out and, and go on the offensive. Um, you know, those two candidates, Rick Perry and, and Mitt Romney, they have so much baggage. They have so many, so many angles that we could pierce their armor with. Uh, that, I mean, you, just, you went down a whole laundry list. Uh, Ron Paul, I believe he should go on the attack, but in some, I mean, there's, there's two schools of thought. You know, taking the high road and then there's people that can go on the offensive like, like we can through, the, through different media outlets, through different PACs and organizations. Uh, we can do the dirty work and the heavy lifting that Ron Paul just can't do.
Well, I agree with that at a certain point, but when I had Ron Paul on the radio a few days ago, he said, look, I want their, their agenda and policies to speak for themselves, but I said, Congressman, respectfully, the public doesn't know. They think it's a joke that these guys are big carbon taxers and, and socialist Hillary care lovers. Uh, you need to get the word out. He said, well, he said, I do see your point. And so I think it's important for Ron Paul himself to come out against these guys. And when Ron Paul finally agreed with me was when I said, look at Rick Perry coming out and saying he's now against the Federal Reserve. This shows how successful the message of liberty has become that Ron Paul isn't just some voice in the wilderness, that establishment neocons are now having to basically take on his political colorations. I think Ron will have an opportunity if, if his handlers allow him to take the gloves off. Um, you know, Ron has a, an established uh, cadre of individuals around him that are assisting him through the campaign. And I think that they're, they do have a specific strategy, and it's hard for them to deviate from some of those strategies. So I think the only opportunity he will have is either if he puts out his own campaign ads, going on the offensive, or if he just goes after them like a pit bull in some of these next upcoming debates. Uh, the debates get a lot of coverage, and I think as we're dwindling down to these top-tier candidates, uh, the opportunities are going to increase. So there's, he's got to capitalize on those moments. Well, he certainly does. Uh, it's just that Rick Perry and Mitt Romney are simply Barack Obama 2.0, another plastic fake Ken doll uh, whose real policies are the polar opposite of what they claim. Shifting into other uh, issues, you know, Ron Paul has been spot on about the inflation tax, the private central banks wrecking our society. Uh, and now, even the Wall Street Journal has reported internal memos at Goldman Sachs are telling some of their biggest investors get ready for a total implosion of our economy in the next six months but they're telling their general investors everything's going to be rosy uh, does that concern you that even Goldman Sachs internally is talking about a total collapse of society well I think it I think yeah, absolutely um, and I'm you know Alex we you have been talking about this for years Ron Paul's been talking about this for years uh, we've been reporting on these things for many many years so uh, it really shouldn't come as any surprise that when you have a, a nation based on a fiat, fiat currency you have the Federal Reserve System that bailouts uh, trillions upon trillions of dollars uh, just devaluing the currency um, but the, the there are results there are results that occur based on those decisions and collapse is one of them so it's up to the american people to brace for impact as we move into the, this fallout that's that's going to happen from these decisions gary i agree with you and i think it's absolutely central something that ron paul's talked a lot about when i gave a speech with him six years ago uh, outside austin in bastrop uh he made the point that when they implode the global system because of the derivatives time bomb, it's impossible to pay back fraudulent Ponzi scheme black hole, that the system that has engineered the crisis is going to pose as a savior, and that it was essential to expose that they were the authors uh, of all of the economic and political pain that we're going through, or they will pose as the saviors and get even more power out of it. Uh, in closing, I want to get your take on a story that's gotten international attention, a 41-year-old mechanic who filmed police uh, in public, he has now been uh, charged and is facing life in prison for taping the police. And the police know that federal and state courts have thrown this out. There's no perception of privacy when you're in public. They know the law doesn't say that. But people are actually being sent to prison for videotaping police. I think this is one of the scariest things I've seen happen in modern modern times, that police and then prosecutors would actually go after people for doing something they know is legal and then tell uh, basically brain-dead juries uh, that it was the law that they can't do this and send people to prison. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, the law they're using is the Illinois wiretap uh, statute, and that states that you cannot videotape somebody that and include audio. Uh, when I used to work for a large retail outfit and we would do security and we would actually monitor shoplifters uh one of the things that was one of the main points that we were told is that we cannot audio tape the people who we are uh, actually reviewing the the shoppers so 
we could only use video. And now every, every single camera, every single iPhone or whatever you want to use uh, records both. The only way to get around that situation in the state of Illinois is either change the law completely or you have to wear a, a placard on you that says, I am not using audio, I'm only recording video. Um, it's unfortunate that, this, that we have a day and age where police feel threatened. Uh, you know, these are, the, these are the people who are tasked to protect and serve us, and if we're not able to hold them accountable, if we're not able to record their, their civic duties and hold them accountable for it, then this nation is lost. So we have to attack the situation on multiple fronts by raising awareness for this statute itself that needs to be reversed. We also need to raise awareness that the police, if they're going to put cameras on us in every street corner, at every red light station, and on the dashboards of every police cruiser, if they're going to put cameras on us, then we have the equal right to put cameras on them in the same exact capacity. Well, Gary, so it's up to the American people to step up and fight this. Well, Gary, that's my point, is that according to the court rulings, I understand they're saying it's the law, but the truth is, in a private business, you can record audio and video. They're just claiming you don't have this right. And just like police have squad car videos and then audio mics on their ties or on their shirt, uh, there's no perception of privacy. Wiretapping is, is going and tapping into somebody's phone line. Or, or, or wiretapping is planning recording devices in somebody's house where there's privacy. And uh, that's why it's being thrown out of court, but it, it's, it's really a scary phenomenon. Well, Gary, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, go ahead and make your point. I was just going to say, they, they're, they're, they're misapplying the law by stating that the wiretapping is being done through a camera with a microphone, and you just stated that it has to be done through a telephone of some sort. Exactly. That's what's scary about this is that they know. They know the courts have been throwing this out for years with 12 states trying this, and the system doesn't care. They just keep going and going and going. Well, folks can find out more at your different uh, websites. Tell us about the Reality Report briefly, and then also the new political pack you've set up to try to uh, run ads nationally uh, going after those that are demonizing Ron Paul. Reality Report, we put out a weekly show, and uh, we try to cover some of the hot-button current events issues and give people solutions to act on those issues. Uh, RealityReport.tv is the website for that. And the Revolution Pack uh, is a super pack that we uh, or organize with uh, leading scholars, authors, and activists uh, such as Tom Woods. And we're, our focus is on raising funds so that we can put out commercial, high quality professional commercial advertisements to support Ron Paul. And the beautiful thing about our super PAC is that we can accept unlimited donations. There's no cap on how much an individual corporation or organization can donate to us. So we, we have a, a great opportunity to raise literally millions upon millions of dollars from wealthy individuals. So we hope that people out there will, uh, will, will seek us out, go to revolutionpack.com and, uh, and support our efforts to get Ron Paul into the White House. Well, Gary Franchi, you're definitely a man in the arena, and um, great uh, luck. Go with God uh, when it comes to going after Rick Perry and Mitt Romney with their real, real records. Thank you so much, Gary, for joining us. It's a pleasure being here, Alex. Pleasure having, having you. Me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there goes Gary Franchi. That is it for the second edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Uh, I want everybody to have a great holiday coming up on Monday, and we'll be back here live Tuesday, 7 o'clock Central, that's 8 p.m. Eastern, for InfoWars Nightly News. The websites are InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv forward slash news. I'm Alex Jones, signing off from the front lines of the InfoWar. Have a great and blessed weekend.